Hey everyone, this is Kirk here again at OptionAlpha.com and in this video I want to go through hopefully the entire process and lay the foundation for how you can generate consistent income trading options. So my goal in this video is to basically bring everything that we learned in track one together and kind of lay the foundation for now going out and doing more tutorials in track two about how we can find trades, placing orders, things like that. But I think it is important that we first cover, you know, kind of the broad strokes. Like we have to understand where we're going so we know what the path is to get there. So for something to be powerful and profitable, it doesn't have to be complicated. Yet more often than not, when I present this system that I'll be presenting to you guys right now, to new traders and even experienced traders, they believe that making money with options must mean crazy systems and thousands of indicators. But the reality is it's just not that case. You see, I love this chart because it's so clear that effectiveness and simplicity are on a linear path together, meaning for something to be extremely effective, it also must be very simple. And options trading definitely has its complicated parts. It's not as easy, it's not as black and white as buying stock and selling stock. But that doesn't mean that it's extremely complex and that you have to have all these different indicators and all these different ways of thinking about trading. You do have to learn a little bit, you do have to put in a little bit of effort and work at it, but it is a very simple process when we talk about it kind of at the high level. Some of the things I'm going to say below in this video you may not like or won't be what you envisioned this game to be, but regardless, it's what you need to be doing to be successful. So here they are, the five things that I believe you have to do to be successful in the options trading space. Number one is you have to trade small positions. We'll go through each and every one of these bullet points in this video because it's a little, little bit longer tutorial, but I think it's worth it to watch it the whole way through. But number one is you have to trade small positions. It kind of goes without saying, but if you trade too large, you're just going to blow up your account. Number two is you have to trade with a high probability of, set, of success. Again, this is not like, I mean, I just to use a like completely uh, opposite example of this is that if you invest in lottery tickets, they don't have a high probability of success. So the likelihood that you're gonna win is really, really low. So you have to invest in something that has a high probability of success. And we'll help you figure out how you can find that in this video. Number three is you have to be in a liquid, uh, liquid stocks and options. I think it goes without saying again, but if the market is not liquid, meaning there's no other participants in there, you're the only person or you and five other people in the entire world are the only participants in there, then you're gonna lose a ton of value to slippage and you may not even be able to get in or out of a trade. So that's obviously a critical component. Number four, probably one of the most important is using the right strategy. We've talked uh, ad nausea about how implied volatility is our edge in trading. And if you believe that implied volatility is our edge in trading, then you have to also believe that you should be generally selling options when implied volatility is high. And if you ever do buy options, you should be buying them when implied volatility is low. And you have to play that volatility game. And again, we'll prove here in a video in a very different way than we have before, how that's the case where direction is meaningless compared to implied volatility. And number five, you have to be doing it as many times as you can. And this gets down to the number of occurrences, the number of times that you trade, creating a large frequency of trades so that over time you hit your expected probability level, whatever you're targeting. Okay, so most traders do one or two, and that's the reality, but they don't do all five. And you can't pick or choose. It takes all of them to win long term in this game. So let's take an example. If you traded small positions in liquid stocks using the right strategy as many times as you can, but you didn't have a high probability of success, you would not win. That's just the reality. You can choose any of these things and you throw one out and it crumbles the whole thing. So this would be like lottery tickets. Lottery tickets are liquid. It's okay, the only strategy you can use. You can do as many times as you want. It's really small investment, a dollar, but it has low probability of success. You're never gonna win. You could trade in something that has a high probability of success in liquid stocks and options, using the right strategy as many times as you can, but your position size is too big and one bad trade that comes along wipes out your entire portfolio. So again, you can't do one or two or three or four, you gotta do all five. And finally, just to kind of drive home the example even more, you could trade small positions with high probability of success in liquid stocks and options using the right strategy, but if you only did it one time, how many, how, how often are you gonna win, right? If you only did it one time or two times, 
I mean, heck, even 10 times. You only did a trade 10 times a year. How often are you really going to win? How often are 10 trades actually going to work out in your favor? Right? So it doesn't work. You take one of these building blocks away and the whole thing crumbles. And this is what most people miss in this space, in my opinion, is they do one or two or three of these, but they don't do all of them. So let's dig in a little bit deeper here and start talking about trade size. Now, this is something we've covered before in depth, but again, at Option Alpha, we firmly, firmly believe, and I've believed this for a long time, that your trade size should be no more than one to 5% of your account balance. Okay, so if this is your account balance on the left-hand side, meaning how much capital you have in your account, this should be your sliding scale of, of trade allocation size. Now, obviously, in my opinion, I think most of the time you should play in this sandbox, meaning the one to 2% region. I mean, even at a $250,000 account, which is a large account, 1% is $2,500 of risk per trade. You can do a lot with $2,500 of risk per trade. You don't need to be going up to the $12,000 of risk per trade. But that also means that if you have a small account, so say you're trading under $5,000, you may need to you know, kind of increase your position size because of the small account so that you can get some trades across, right? So you may need to move up to the two or 3% level, but there are definitely trades that you can place out there for $100 or $150 risk. Are you gonna make enough money to you know, quit your job and you know, sail away on a cruise ship or yacht or whatever? No, you're not, but you have to be realistic with your expectations. And if you trade too large with a small account, don't make the assumption that making or having more money in your account is gonna magically make you a better trader. I can guarantee that if you can't make money with a account 15 to $5,000, there's no way that you're gonna make money if you had an account of $100,000. You're just gonna lose money a lot quicker with more money. Okay, so focus your time, if you do have a small account, focus your time on making small, high probability trades like we're gonna discuss, because that's how you win in this game. It's a long-term game of slowly building up capital and profits, okay? Now, obviously, the next part of that is high probability of success. And this is something that we've talked about, again, at nausea, because we know what the probabilities of winning on a trade or not are or not, and we can show you here in a second. But remember, markets move in a more or less distribute normal distribution pattern. We actually showed in one of the previous videos here in track one, we went back all the way to 1990 and tracked the Dow Jones daily move, and it was almost exactly a normal distribution from 1990. Are there times when you'll have five or six days of up moves? Yes, but generally over time, markets move in a normal distribution pattern of percentage up or percentage down moves. So if we take that normal distribution pattern, we know that over time, as the stock moves, as the stock moves, we can figure out what likelihood or what the percentage range is that the stock might move 68% of the time. So like we could take this stock and if this stock was at $50, we could look on our charts and on our broker platform and see that there's a 68% chance it moves between $60 and say $40, okay? So we know those are known numbers. And this is how we can then determine what types of high probability trades we wanna get into, okay? And then at that point, it just is a matter of you know choosing which direction you wanna go and it really doesn't even matter at that point, okay? So here's the deal. So here's a high probability example of a trade that you can make in, I think uh, the chart that I grabbed here was SPY, okay? So SPY at the time that I grabbed this chart was trading at 203. The April options, which are about 22 days away, you can see exactly what the probability of each and every strike price being in the money is at expiration. Now remember, this is calculating based on the entire trading history of the S&P or whatever stock you're looking at, every move it's ever made, up or down, the magnitude of every move, how fast it's moved in a given time period, and then implied volatility. And so all of those numbers are then populated into a broker platform where you can see what the probability that the stock is, that each and every strike is gonna be in the money at expiration. So in this case, if the stock right now is trading at 203, we know that in the next 22 days, there is a 31% chance that the stock goes from 203 up to and above the 205 call, 205 and a half call strike. We know that that's the probability. So if there's a 31% chance that it goes above that level, that means that there is basically a 70% chance that it never goes above that level, okay? So if we're option sellers, which we usually like to be, then we would sell these 205 and a half calls, 
and basically taking a credit of $152, knowing that we've got about a 70% chance that the stock never gets to our strike price, okay? So again, these numbers are known, and you can basically pick what likelihood of success you wanna have. I mean, the, the field is open, you know what I mean? The buffet is open. You choose how often you wanna be successful. At Option Alpha, we usually choose around the 70% probability of success range. Okay, now it works in the same direction, uh, in the same way, in the opposite direction with puts. So down below the market, we also know that if the stock is trading at 203.20, that in the next 22 days, there is only a 30% chance that the market goes below 198 and a half. Okay, so again, we know these numbers, they're known numbers. That means that if the stock market doesn't go, or there's a 70% chance that the stock market doesn't go below 198 and a half. Okay, so 70% chance that it stays above this level at any point between now and expiration. So again, if we were to sell these put options, we could sell these put options for $122 and have basically a 70% chance of success, okay? So notice, it really doesn't matter. I mean, like there's a, a slight difference in pricing here. And in most cases, there's gonna be a slight difference in either direction, one way or another. But generally speaking, you're collecting about the same amount of money for the same probability of success on either end. So really direction is meaningless compared to making high probability trades and being on the right side of volatility, okay? So again, we got more video tutorials on that here at Option Alpha. We don't have time to go into every can, you know, uh, uh, possible strategy and how you can figure out the probability of success, but this is a great example because I just wanted to show you guys that it's known. You can choose your probability of success, however you know successful you want to be in the trades that you make. Again, here at Option Alpha, we choose about the 70% level. We find that that's a good risk reward for what we try to do. Next, it's important we focus on just stocks and ETFs with really great liquidity because slippage can literally rob you of your potential profits. Now, here's the deal. Here is SPY. And this is not the time that I did the other uh, screenshot here, although it's very similar pricing, but completely different time. So that tells you the market's been completely sideways since then. Uh, that's pretty interesting. But when I took this screenshot of slippage, uh, it's important to note that SPY is one of the most highly traded uh, ETFs and options that are out there. And you can see the volume and open interest category for both the calls and the put side here is insane, right? There's a lot of people who are trading these, these options. And as a result, the options have very, very narrow slippage or very tight bid-ask spreads. You can see even far out of the money around 201 and a half and even at 204 and a half, the slippage is down to around a penny or two pennies per trade. Okay, so very, very tight slippage. Apple, another great example. Highly liquid stock, highly liquid options. Look how many people are trading uh, the volume and open interest for each of these contracts in Apple. I mean, it's just, there's a lot of liquidity in these markets. And what that means is that there's very minimal slippage. So there's not a lot of slippage in the difference between what you can buy an option for and what you can sell it for, the bid-ask spread, okay? Now, even with these incredibly tight bid-ask spreads, we'll still lose a little bit of money to slippage trading options, uh, again, in these super liquid options. So here's how the math works out. If you have an option that has a $1 or one uh, penny wide bid ask spread, you times that penny, because I, I wanna get you to the full value here, you times that penny by 100, which is the contract multiplier. Because remember, each option contract controls basically 100 shares of stock. So one penny times 100 times one contract, if you just buy one contract, times two sides to every trade, meaning you're gonna basically lose this slippage if you, uh, as soon as you get into a trade and as soon as you get out of a trade, okay? So most people don't cover that part of it. They only assume slippage happens once and then it's done, but you lose it twice effectively. So you lose that slippage twice. That means that every time you trade just one option in Apple or SPY, we're losing $2 per trade. So again, every time, every single time that we trade Apple, just one contract, you lose $2. If we traded each stock one time each month for a year, we'd lose $48 just in slippage, okay? That's a that's little slippage, that's minimal slippage, the least amount of slippage you can possibly have. But let's not deter you though. The profits we can generate, again, just trading one spread each time covers slippage and commissions each year, but what about other stocks? And this is the important part here about choosing 
liquid underlying stocks and options. So here's an example of Nike. Nike is kind of middle of the road. It's got, I, I wouldn't consider this to be insanely high slippage. I think there's things that are even wider than this, 50 cents to a dollar wide. But Nike is not necessarily a very liquid underlying. Okay, so in this case, you can see that Nike, uh, the slippage, even for at the money options, is pretty wide. I mean, we're talking about 10 to 12 cents wide of slippage between the bid price and the ask price. And again, it's reflective in the fact that there's not a lot of volume and open interest for these contracts generally. There's a couple people trading, and that's okay, but there's not a lot of volume and open interest for Nike contracts right at the time. So here's how the math works out on Nike. You've got a $10, let's take the lower end of that range, a $10 bid and ask spread times the 100 contract multiplier times one contract if you just get into one contract, two sides because you got to open and close it. That means $20 per trade you're losing just in slippage. Now we didn't even talk about commissions. So again, every single time that you trade just one contract in Nike, we're losing $20 to slippage. I mean, talk about starting out in the hole, right? I mean, you get into a trade, you're down 20 bucks immediately. And you wonder why most traders don't make money in this business. So again, if we traded Nike just one time each month for an entire year, we would lose $240 in total. That's one stock and 12 trades. Again, you wonder why people don't make money in this business because they're not focusing on highly, highly liquid underlines, okay? Now, thankfully for you guys, we did build a watch list here at Option Alpha that pre-screens all of the possible stocks and ETFs out there for liquidity. We update this list on a rolling basis to make sure that these options and stocks both have a lot of liquidity and fairly tight bid ask spreads, okay? So we focus here on Option Alpha at around, uh, probably around 80 to 100 uh, stocks and ETFs, depending on you know how we screen them out. And we built this watch list software into our platform. It's totally proprietary for us that we built. And again, it's really cool because now you can focus, you know, I just want to focus on, let's say, ETFs only, okay? And now you can scan and filter between ETFs or earnings trades. You can say, you know, hey, I want to see the highest implied volatility stocks first or the lowest implied volatility stocks first. Whatever you want to do, it's all pre-built into this platform. And again, we don't give you the ability to, to search for any stock here because we've already scanned the entire universe and we've basically chosen the top 80 to 100, depending on the month cycle that we're in, because we'll constantly update and monitor this. But we've basically given you the list of 80 to 100 of the most liquid underlying ETF stocks, everything, so that you have the ability to focus on just those that work for you. So again, it's a way that we help kind of get you to where you need to go here at Option Alpha. Now, the next part of this is choosing the right strategy. So once we've now focused on highly liquid underlines, which we can do here for you, you don't have to do on your own, now we have to focus on the right strategy. So remember, our edge trading options is the ability to consistently sell high implied volatility setups that we have already proven are historically overpriced and gives us the widest possible margin for error while still being able to make money. And what that basically means is that as volatility expands, all option prices go up. So if we want to profit, we need to be selling implied volatility when it's high because that means we're selling options when their prices are already high. As volatility contracts, all option prices go down. And that's all options on both sides in both cases, right? So as volatility drops, all prices go down. And so that means that if we are going to be an option buyer, we would never wanna buy options when implied volatility is high because if implied volatility drops, we would lose value in those contracts that we bought just purely on the drop in implied volatility, okay? And so right now I wanna kinda of prove this point here with a quick example in EWW. So you can do this on most broker platforms. On Thinkorswim, it's really great because you can basically go in here and simulate what would happen for different movements in either volatility or the stock price itself, okay? In this case, what we've done here is we've basically built out a simple call credit spread. So we've sold the 59 calls, we bought the 60 calls, and the stock right now is trading at 56.08. Okay, so again, we're selling options above the market. Stock's trading at 56.08. We sold the 59 calls and bought the 60 calls, and we're taking in a credit of 18 cents on the trade. Okay, just to kind of set the foundation here. 
Now at this point, we haven't made any adjustments to the stock or to the options. This is just the kind of current value of that spread. And you can see that there's no adjustment to volatility, there's no adjustment to the stock. This is kind of like the open and available uh, price of the security right now. But what would happen if we just simulated a 10% rise in the value of these in, in implied volatility? Okay, so the stock gets more volatile, but doesn't move. Look at this, the stock never ever moved from 5609. But just adding that increase in volatility of 10%, which is a small increase across the board, you see that the value of these options goes up by 26 to $26, okay? So 10% increase in volatility, no movement in the stock at all, and the value of these options go up. So again, this 10% move up in volatility caused a 44% increase in the price of the spread. So if we were selling this spread, that would be a loss in this case because we sold the credit spread and IV went higher. That goes against what we're trying to do. We're trying to make money if implied volatility drops. We're, by selling options, we try to make money by uh, buying options and hoping that implied volatility rises. So you have to be on the right side of volatility. And of course, this is assuming the stock doesn't move, which likely won't happen. So let's do this now. Let's assume now that the stock actually dropped in value by to $55.09, okay? So it basically went down $1, which is exactly what we wanted it to do, but implied volatility still rose by 10%. Now this is the classic case where traders will email me and say, hey Kirk, the stock went the direction that I wanted it to, it moved the direction I wanted to, but I still lost money. And you still lost money because implied volatility is still a bigger factor than the stock price. And so in this case, that implied volatility move still caused the value of this option to go up, even though the stock went the direction that we wanted. So again, even after a $1 move down in EWW, which is exactly what we wanted, the price of the spread still increased because of volatility expansion by more than 22%. Now let's do this. Let's look at a drop in volatility of 10%. Okay, so now let's assume that volatility goes the right way, the way that we want it to go and the stock price goes against us by a dollar. So remember, the stock was originally at $56.09. Now the stock goes against us. Remember, we sold the 59.56 credit call spread. We don't want the stock going towards 59. We want the stock going away from 59. But let's assume that the stock goes up by a dollar, but in that time period, implied volatility dropped 10%. Notice that this, the value of this option now decayed just to eight cents. So it went down and we now have a profit on this trade. So again, with a $1 move higher against our position and a 10% drop in implied volatility, the spread made a profit and dropped to a value of $8 per spread. So do you see now why most traders lose money even if they get the direction right? And I still am blown away every time I go through this example that this is the case and most people don't get it. You must be on the right side of volatility. The right strategy in the wrong market, meaning the right uh, position in the wrong market where you don't get the direction right can still win, okay? Now, how do you know if something has high implied volatility? Well, here at Option Alpha, what we teach is to use IV percentile or IV rank. You can use it on your charts and basically you can track a graph of implied volatility and you can see where the spikes are in implied volatility. So all the red circles here, these are spikes in implied volatility. These are the time periods where you want to be selling options, where you want to be a net seller of options. So you want to use strategies like credit spreads, iron condors, strangles, straddles, etc. Okay, when implied volatility is really low, you don't wanna be selling options, right? You don't wanna sell options because remember, if implied volatility rises, then even if you get the directional move in the stock right, you're gonna lose money based on that rise in implied volatility, okay? So it's actually fairly easy. This is a concept that most people don't understand, but it's, it's fairly easy to see visually where, you, uh, where implied volatility is uh, basically on the charts. Now again, if you don't have Thinkorswimmer, you can't get this. We do have it here at Option Alpha inside of our watch list. And we have all of these filters here that basically help you scan and filter out high implied volatility and sort by high implied volatility rank. Okay, so now you can go in here and you can say, hey, I just wanna look at ETFs. I wanna sort by highest implied volatility 
Now you can see here that these are the implied volatility ranks zero to 100 for each and every security in this chart. So you can see these are the different implied volatility ranks. Right now, EWZ, at the time that we're doing this video, has the highest possible implied volatility of ETFs that we're looking at right now. E, uh, UNG, not as high, it's in the 60s, and then GDX is below 50, so we probably wouldn't do anything in GDX because it's just too low. Now, if you wanted help in just understanding what strategy to use based on implied volatility, what we've also built into the platform, which nobody else has out there, is the ability to actually look at and give you suggestions on the best possible strategies for this current implied volatility rank in every different scenario. So you can see here with a 61 IV rank, you wanna be trading credit spreads and butterflies and iron condors. With a 70 IV rank, you wanna trade strangles and straddles and iron butterflies. And with a 46 IV rank, you wanna trade debit spreads and calendars and diagonals. We've basically done the heavy lifting for you and given you a pre-screened liquid watch list that tells you exactly which uh, stocks and options have the highest implied volatility and then tells you what the best option strategies are so that you're always on the right side of volatility. And of course, as a special bonus, we have also added the one day, one week, and one month expected ranges, meaning we know that the stock will move 68% of the time in these ranges. We already pre-calculate them for you. So again, if you wanted to make a monthly trade in uh, EWZ and you wanted to have a 68% chance of success, you've gotta be selling options around $19 and above $32. Remember, stock right now is trading at $25.67. So again, it already pre-calculates what the likelihood is that the stock will move so that you know exactly how far out you wanna sell options to have about a 70% chance of success, okay? Insanely helpful. So now that we've covered one through four, the final piece is just to realize that your chance of success increases with time and frequency. Remember that in order to get long-term consistency, we have to remember the law of large numbers, which states that as a sample size grows, or the number of trades that you make, the mean will get closer and closer to the expected value of the population. And again, in real English terms, what this means is that if you are targeting, let's say, 70% chance of success, you might not hit a 70% chance of success on your first trade or your first two trades or your first 10 trades. But if you make a lot of trades, say 1,000 or even 10,000 trades over the course of your career, not necessarily in one month or one year, but the longer you stick with it and the longer you target that 70% level, the more consistent you'll be. So consistency over time is just a numbers game. So again, just to use that head and tails example that we've used before in previous videos, is that if you start flipping a coin, heads and tails, your first three uh, results of flipping that coin might be all tails. Like your first three trades might be all profits or your first three trades might be all losers. And that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to have that same trajectory or that same path. But if you keep flipping the coin, time and time again. So you toss the coin four times, a hundred, a thousand, ten thousand times. The more you toss that coin, the closer you're going to get to your expected result. So whatever you target, that's where you're going to get. Remember, this is why casinos have table limits because they want people to play more so that they have more spins, more rolls, more chances and making money, they realize and they recognize that their success is directly tied to the number of times that people play their game and they play their game on a small scale. So again, if a casino has one spin and they're playing a game where the odds are stacked against them, players are behind 51% of the time after one spin. It's probably their best opportunity to make money. But after 100 spins or after 1,000 or even after 10,000 spins or plays at a casino game, there's almost a 100% chance that you're going to be behind to the casino or the casino is going to win because their edge is going to have played out over hundreds and thousands of different spins. Again, this is why casinos try to get you back to back to them. That's why they offer free meals and free drinks and free hotel rooms because they know the more times you come, the more plays that you you know have at blackjack or roulette or whatever the case is, the better and better their chance of success are. So the more that they can get you to play, 
the higher their probability of winning is. So again, you're going to hit what you're aiming for. And this is why trade size and high probabilities are so important for smaller accounts. You have to be able to place enough trades so that over time the numbers work out in your favor. And they will, just like a coin flip. All right, so one thing that I didn't mention that we were going to talk about, but I want to introduce here is the concept of stacking or laddering trades on a consistent basis. And I wanted to do this because as we get towards the end of track one here, and as you complete track one, it's really important to understand this concept because oftentimes what people will say to me is, Kirk, you know, I don't know how often I should trade, or I don't know how to space my trades, or, you know, what should I be looking for? And we've covered most of that, but I think this concept of stacking or laddering is going to be really helpful to you. And again, it's just purely meant to get the juices going between your ears because there are many ways to do this, but the concept is very much the same. So what most people do when they get out and start trading is they start making these one-off monthly trades. And again, they don't do enough of them. So they make four trades a year or five trades a year. And when you look at it, if this is the market right now, so like if this is the time period that you made a trade back in Apple, you might have sold a call option here at 124, and then you sold a put option here at 110, or any combination of strategies that included selling that call and that put, but you basically draw a really hard line in the sand that's one trade, maybe it's a big trade position size, maybe you do 10% of your account balance, right, in that one trade, it's still a high probability trade, but you end up pigeonholing yourself to the market move because you have one spot to get in, one opportunity to make that play. Now, it doesn't mean that it's not going to work. It's just mean, it just means that if you make, let's say, one trade here, one trade here, so that's your second trade all year, then you make three trades. So now you've made three trades all year. You have a low likelihood of actually seeing a profitable result at the end of the year because you just didn't trade enough and your initial position size was probably too large, okay? And again, you can still move and be flexible with the market depending on where the market is every single month. On the other hand, what we favor here at Option Alpha are smaller incremental trades throughout the month and throughout the year. So instead of placing one big trade, we're going to place these little trades. And so like here would be a strike price, but again, this might only be 1% of your account balance. And this trade right here might be a different trade or a different call option that again is 1% of your account balance. And now we're spreading the risk and kind of averaging around where the market's trading. So for example, if the market's trading here, we sell a call option here and we sell a call option here. Then a couple days later, when the market's a little bit higher, we sell another call option and again, adjust our strike prices so that we're just trying to stay neutral and even and balanced around the market. Again, as the market trades, we just continue to adjust our strike prices and follow the market wherever it goes over time. And again, each trade that we're doing is small, slow, consistent, and high probability. We're just spacing out the trades over time, and I think that's a better way of going about it. And again, this is called stacking or laddering trades, because a lot of these things look like little stair steps or little ladders that you can put on a chart, okay? Again, it's visually how I think about it. So this doesn't mean that we're moving away from monthly options into weekly options. We're still placing a monthly contract every single time, so sorry, weekly fans but that we're spreading our entry out over maybe one to two plus weeks in the same security, okay? So for example, if we wanted to sell, let's say six iron condors in Apple, rather than enter all six today, maybe split up your order to three today and three next week, okay? And it's that type of concept because it increases your occurrences, you're still doing six, but now you're spreading the trades out over time. You're giving the market a little bit of time to move and you're giving yourself a little bit of opportunity to be flexible with the market, okay? So like a simple schedule for you would be something like this. And again, the calendar dates don't matter, but let's say that you know for you getting started, you would come in every single Wednesday and come in and try to make a trade, right? So on Wednesday, you'd make a trade and you know, find something that has high probability, a high implied volatility, make a trade. The next Wednesday, you come and make another trade. The next one, you make another trade, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you get on a consistent schedule. As long as you're starting out, this is a good way to, to do it. Get on a consistent schedule to make trades because you don't want to just make trades 
necessarily when the market is high or low because you don't know when that is. How do you know when the market is high or low? So I feel like the better way to go about it, the mathematical approach that you should be taking is making a consistent schedule of getting in and making trades. You could also take the approach if you want to be a little bit more consistent. Instead of making you know five trades every month, you come in and you make 10 trades every month. So on Tuesday, you make a trade. Then on Wednesday, you make another trade. Then the next Tuesday, you make another. And the next Wednesday, you make another, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay? So as long as you realize that this idea of stacking or laddering can basically be your key to slowly getting into positions, keeping a neutral portfolio and keeping that balance, and increasing the number of occurrences so that you hit your targeted probability of success, that's what's really important here. So again, the key here with stacking or laddering is that it gives you, it gets you into a consistent pattern of selling options in small chunks versus one big position each month. And more importantly, you are reacting to the market much quicker. If you enter a trade on Tuesday and Thursday of every week, you can average into whatever the market's doing. So just to wrap up here, as far as generating consistent income with trading, the game plan should include these five things. If you don't have one of these five things, there is no way you can be successful long term. You have to believe in each one of these five aspects because it's insanely important to your ability to generate money. That means you have to trade small positions. They have to be with a high probability of success in liquid stocks and options using the right strategy and you have to do it for a long time. Okay, so hopefully this has been really, really helpful and kind of lays the foundation again for what we're going to talk about further in our training in track two and track three here at Option Alpha. Well, congratulations on completing track one. If you've made it this far in this video and you're watching all the way to the end, you've really done an amazing job going through all this training. Uh, and I can definitely tell you that you're probably at least ahead of 90% of the other people out there who don't get even this far. But I can tell you right now, you don't wanna quit, you don't wanna give up, continue on to track two and three. We're gonna get even deeper and deeper into strategy, order entry, managing trades, and everything that goes along with being successful trading options. Again, hopefully you've seen now the opportunity that options have to give you a very reliable and stable income base in your portfolio. And it is a little bit of a tough trek at some time, at some points, but I can tell you honestly that it is completely worth the journey if you're willing to take it. So I'd love to get your comments, your feedback. If you love this video or any of the stuff that we're doing here at Option Alpha, please share this online. Help spread the word about what we're trying to do. And until next time, happy trading.